Hippos rescued from Pablo Escobar won't stop having sex and pooping. A family of elephants casually broke into someone's room in China, and someone actually paid a million dollars to buy a parking spot. Yup, what in the world? An unnamed buyer has just bought a parking spot at one of Hong Kong's luxury residential compounds for $1.3 million, or 10.2 Hong Kong dollars. That's insane. With that price, you'd think that the car being parked there was either a sentient being who needed one bathroom and two bedrooms to survive, or a time travel machine in disguise hidden away in some secret lab. But unfortunately, this is a mere reflection of Hong Kong's massive real estate problem. In fact, the previous world record for the most expensive parking spot was also located in Hong Kong, being sold for nearly a million dollars back in 2019. The city has the world's most unaffordable housing market, with even parking spots becoming investment properties for the rich. And homes less than 200 square feet or shoebox flats costing over a million dollars. That's about a price of a beachside pad in Florida, or a quaint country home in some parts of Italy. As for the million dollar parking spot, we don't even know who the owner is. Some speculate that property tycoon Edwin Leong is the owner of this parking space, as he had told local newspaper Ming Pao that he did buy some parking spots at the same compound. But he maintains this $1.3 million space was not one of them. On the other four parking spots he has, the billionaire argues that he had no choice, as there can be no way that the owner of a 4,000 square foot apartment only has one car. Uh, we get it, man, and we can totally relate to this. Totally. The wealthiest criminal in history and probably the most prolific narco-terrorist ever has been long gone, but Pablo Escobar still remains wreaking havoc to this day. Not in the form of a ghost running a cartel, but in the form of his cocaine hippos. And these cuddly herbivores love two things, getting it on and pooping. It's taken a huge dump on the environment. Here's the thing though, these hippos aren't drug mules or white powder loving party animals. They're called cocaine hippos since they were rescued from the Kingpin's luxury estate after he had smuggled drugs through four of them in the 1980s. Now, with too much happy hippo time, these horses of the rivers have raced their way to 80 and their toxic urine and feces have taken over Colombia's waterways. Researchers estimate that by 2039, their population will grow to more than 1,400, spelling disaster for the future of Puerto Triunfo's ecosystem and all the other native wildlife in it, like sea turtles and the already endangered manatees. Government attempts at controlling the problem have been proven to be tough since they're only able to castrate one hippo a year due to their internal testes being difficult to reach. To add, locals have grown fond of these animals, even becoming a tourist attraction, boasting hippo safari tours and even a theme park. Through a population study, Colombian ecologists made the controversial suggestions that calling them it means killing might be the best option at this point. One of the researchers believed that calling 30 hippos a year would make it possible to eradicate invasive population, rescuing their waters and protecting native wildlife. However, with the measure being so extreme, it's unlikely to be put into action soon. We could ask the hippos nicely if they could maybe stop pooping and having sex. But if humans would just stop putting animals where they don't belong, that might be nice too. Like, just imagine if an elephant started walking to your room. A 69-year-old man from Yunnan, China, hid under his bed out of fear as two elephants broke into his room, turning on the tap for some water. The pair belongs to a family of wild elephants wandering across southwestern China after having left a natural reserve in the area. The species do not have a habit of seasonal migration, so folks are dumbfounded on why they are on the move and where they're going. However, experts say that the elephants themselves don't know the answers to this either. Turns out, some who wander are lost and Becky Xu Chen from the Zoological Society of London says the herd's just looking for food. While conservation efforts have been successful, with the elephants' numbers growing, unfortunately the same cannot be said about their habitat, with forest and southern Yunnan shrinking due to human activities. Food such as pineapples, corn, and bananas have been put along the elephants' paths to try to lure them back into their homes. With the spectacle these wandering trunks have been, Chen sees a silver lining in the form of public awareness being brought towards elephant conservation, and how elephants and people should coexist. This Filipino grandpa made a living guarding cars from petty thieves, 
Now, he's opening his own art exhibit. With the pandemic stripping away jobs and opportunities, some are turning to unconventional means for their living, with others leading to success. Gladly, Tatay Edgardo found this through art. All across the world, people are looking up to a variety of outrageous activities. Case in point, someone who actually came up with the Spaced Out competition. An event that makes competitive sport out of spacing out. The first of its kind happened back in 2014 in Seoul, Korea, and has been an annual event since then. Participants are tasked to do nothing for 90 minutes, and the top 10 contestants chosen by the audience will then be ranked according to the most stable heart rate. The winner gets a certificate, a trophy, and a cash prize. Just be careful not to fall asleep, or you'll get disqualified. May the lack of knots be ever in your favor. Who says money doesn't grow on trees? A couple in India accidentally grew the world's most expensive mangoes through a series of fortunate events. Shamani, who wrote this story for Vice, tells us more. How much actually is the world's most expensive mangoes? They actually had these auctions in Japan last year, if I'm not wrong. They went for about half a million Japanese yen, which is the $4,500. Um, that's how much two mangoes sold for. That's actually how much it sells in like, the international market. Um, in India, um, from what we know, this is the only person who has been able to grow this mango. And he was offered about 21,000 Indian rupees, which I think is about... 200 and something dollars. Yeah, I mean, it, it can sort of really, really make you rich. Okay, so ha have you ever had it as part of this research for this article? I really wanted to. I really wanted to. Unfortunately, social distancing meant that I couldn't. But I do have an invite to go to the farm and, uh, you know, try the mango whenever I'm actually in town. The farmer lives in this uh, remote part of India called Madhya Pradesh, which is in central India. And uh, yeah, this story kind of came up during the second wave when India was going through some of its highest coronavirus numbers. But uh, yeah, I think it was just like that burst of positivity everyone needed that, okay, hey, you know, all this really horrible stuff is happening. But there's also a farmer who's making a mango that's worth 20,000 rupees. How does it taste? So I do know how it tastes because I, it was described to me in detail. It actually is super sweet, but not like, not like overly sweet. And, Apparently the pulp is like a jelly, so it's actually more like you're eating a mango jelly. And the skin is so soft that you can even eat the skin of the mango. That's kind of the main cell. It has this red and purplish hue, you know, like it's not it's not like your standard mango, it's not like yellow. How did you find out about this mango? Okay, so I actually found out about it through a local uh, news channel. And they were reporting it in this way where they were like, okay, you know, this man has hired like a whole army of security guards. Uh, so I kind of dug deeper into it and then I realized that it's actually the Miyazaki mango which is one of the world's most expensive mango varieties. It's also called the Egg of the Sun. Then I spoke to um, Hanako, who is the vice correspondent in Japan, and I asked her that, oh, are these mangoes like a big deal? And she's like, oh my God, it's such a huge deal. It's like the most bougie mangoes you can find. Like, you know, it's sort of like this super like high society thing that happens in Japan. So I was like amazed that some, like a farmer from India has made a mango that only the high society of Japan can access. So that's sort of when I got in touch with him. And when I spoke to him, I realized, uh, he kind of told me the story about how this mango came to him very serendipitously. He told me that initially he was going to take a flight, but he, for some reason, decided to take a, like, a train and he actually missed the train that he was supposed to sit on. So he ended up taking another train. That's when he met this mysterious man who told him that, oh, I can sell you this mango sapling. And uh, I think like he had this conversation with this man. He was very fascinated by him. And then uh, this guy was actually on his way to uh, Chennai to get hybrid coconut seeds, which he did not get. Instead, he got this mango sapling. And he came back and he said that, he didn't even know what the sapling was. The man just told him it's like a special mango sapling that I've got. He didn't even tell him from where he's got it. He just said, okay, this is a special mango sapling. It'll bring luck and love into your life. So this, yeah, he took the sapling home. He named it after his mother, Damini. Yeah, then he kind of grew it and he grew it in completely natural growing conditions. One of the reasons why it's so expensive because it's grown in really, really expensive conditions. But what's interesting here is that this farmer told me that in India, it can grow organically. You don't need to create these expensive environmental conditions to make it grow. So essentially, it's super accessible. It's just that like nobody, I guess maybe nobody tried it or people didn't know that this was a thing. Another thing it's important to note that he decided not to sell his plant, even though he was offered like a shitload of money for it. He still said that, okay, no, it's something that I want to keep cultivating. I want to keep experimenting. So one of the things I asked him is that, are you going to create like a community of like farmers or are you going to take this initiative? And he said, that is on his radar. So I think the vision he sees is how do we take this plant that is so expensive and is the world's most expensive mango and make it accessible across India. What would you say is the most interesting and crucial thing about this story? I think there's two elements to it. The first one is that 
it was accidental like they did not know they were growing the world's most expensive mango it's just something that happened they were like oh we're growing this mango it's cool like we're doing something we're growing a special mango secondly the fact that they have an army of guards they have nine guard dogs and three security guards who work around the clock and the farmer also told me that he doesn't get sleep at night because every half an hour or every one hour the security guard has to blow a whistle so and he's like i don't get sleep the whole night the dogs are barking the whole night and it's like you know i'm paying like so much money for all these people to hire all these people but it's like worth it because the mangoes give me more value than like all the other things in life 